Saturday. We're at Whipple Wheel Holler. I'm Mr. Brown. And I'm Miss Lori. We're going to take you off for kind of a tour, but this tour is going to explain the footage and how we how they built the cabin. Basically how we built it. Just a, just a rough idea, but try to give you enough detail so that you'll give an idea of what you need to do, maybe. So, we're going to get started, and I hope you all enjoy it. So, the footing of the house is a normal footing, about 18, 20 inches wide. Concrete, so thick. And then, the concrete blocks. And we built this house, we cut, took the earth the ground away from it so it has a crawl space about three over three foot all under the house is the same amount of crawl space we use the concrete blocks and we filled the concrete blocks full of cement and then we this is the side door where you can go in under the house if you need to go in there and i've got lights under there i can flip a light switch and go crawl under there with lights on if i need be in each of course, we have the underneath vented for the summertime. We got the side vents to vent it. Okay, this house, this small cabin is 24 feet wide. It is 40 feet long, not counting the porches. That's just the base living inside under roof house. The lumber is pine. A slow growth pine. Some of this lumber was pro uh, trees were probably somewhere around a hundred years old when they cut them. I just I was going to use cypress, which is a good type of wood that weathers good in this country, uh, and it was hard to find. I couldn't I couldn't find it. The people that had been milling it uh, didn't have it. Uh, the big stores didn't even have it. There, there was a shortage of cypress, so I got to looking for. Some different lumber and I run across this from a local sawmill a guy that had been on Crowley's Ridge several miles from here and uh, had sawed it up and there was more than enough 1 by 12 boards an inch thick 12 inches wide that we covered the whole outside of the house and our porches the floor of our porches are built with one by twelve. It's what they call board and batten. We had the regular stud wall on the inside. Out of tuba, I actually believe we did two by sixes. <clears throat> on the walls, we put a uh, sheeting of OSB on the outside of the wall, and then we put this lumber on it. And then each strip where the lumber comes together. To keep from having the crack showing, we put a two inch stripping, about a half inch thick, two inch stripping that would cover each crack. Now, a lot of people is going to want to know why we don't paint it, why we haven't stained it and sealed it. In this area, my experience is that when you paint lumber, it covers the outside, or if you seal it with a sealer, it covers the outside of it. Well, there's nothing on the inside. So when moisture wicks through or manages to get under that seal, then your lumber don't dry out after a rain or in and out of season. It won't dry, and it tends to hold moisture behind it, and <clears throat> it will cause it to rot. Now, it won't necessarily all the time on the siding but down at places down low and corners and on porch areas and things like that so this is fixing to be six years old in december and i expect that this slow growth lumber is as tough as it comes and it's full of pine rosin i mean it is absolutely full of it and a matter of fact you can see some of the yellow that bleaches out, that is actually pine rosin, and it protects it. And most of the time, if you can keep lumber where it can dry out after it gets wet, it'll last years and years and years. This will be standing when me and Miss Lori's long gone. 
I'm going to show you a little bit of difference about lumber if you're not experienced with lumber. Growth of lumber. This here is a, the growth rings. You see, these growth rings are about an eighth of an inch apart. That's each year of growth. These are all across here. This one 12 inch board has somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 growth rings, 50 years. And this whole house is built out of that type of quality lumber. If you, <clears throat> on what they call number two pine nowadays, is a fast growth pine for the most part. It may be different than it is in this area. But <clears throat> you see how these growth rings, this is, this is the center wood. This is the heart. And it had some faster growth in its, in, its, in its young years. But if you find lumber that has these, if the growth rings are four apart, then your quality of lumber is not that, it's not that good. Not meaning you can't use it on the inside or to build your framing with. But if it's going to weather on the outside, it's best to have a slow growth type of wood. There was one of these boards that the Midnight Boy found that had 75 growth rings across it. And you can see this yellow, that's that rosin that's still bleaching out of this wood even after six years. So now we're on the front porch. It's 24 feet wide and it's eight foot, I'm sorry, 24 long, eight foot wide. The, the decking on this porch is also out of 1 by 12 pine. The steps coming up is, is treated pine. It's out of treated lumber. The front of the porch up here, they, these are 6 by 6 posts. These four posts on the bottom are oak because we run out of pine. The up here, the upper part is pine and I got these oak to put here and they're doing fine. They're, they'll bust open because there's a little bit green, but they're going to be plenty stout. And what you have to watch out for, if you put wooden post, say on a concrete, if you had a concrete porch and you put wooden post, a lot of times in this area, the post will rot out at the bottom. It's very important if you use wood where that water can get away from it and dry. If it's on sitting on concrete and that concrete holds that moisture nine times out of ten in a few years then posts will start rotting out at the bottom all of this lumber was rough cut sawmill cut lumber the only thing that we finished was the inside we had it sanded and tongue and groove but all this is rough sawmill cut <clears throat> Especially at night with the light, you can see the saw rings where the, where the big bladed saw run down the side of the lumber, cutting it. I don't know whether you can see them saw rings or not, but they're, they're, it's just full of saw rings running across the lumber, which to me, I like because that's just, that's just part of it. I don't think you can see it in there, but see a little bit uh it used to stand out more now and we've walked on enough we're smoothing it up all right the beams this whole house is open ceiling the beams are made out of lumber i cannot remember if these are two by eights or two by tens but they're one or the other I'm, i can't remember how far the ceiling drops down along this beam but it's if it's two by eight or two by tens, regardless, it has four of them per beam. It has two on out on each outside, and the center is a two by four that has been cut down a little bit size. It's about three inches, and it went into the center. So the very inside of these beams are hollow. And there was another two by four on the top, and then the two by sixes across the braces. And when they built these, they built, we built them on the floor. And then they stood them up and let them hang over the walls. And we took a pole and flipped them up and made them stand up straight and then fastened them down. It was actually a lot simpler than you think it would have been.
So our ceiling up there is galvalume 10. It's not galvanized, it's galvalume, which is not as bright a 10. Inside, you don't want the, galval the galvanized because it's so bright and shiny, but it's galvalume. And our roof is also galvalume on the outside. And it helps uh, keep heat from penetrating the galvalume does. Also, on between this ceiling tin and the roof tin on the outside is six inches of fiberglass insulation. And then on top of that, underneath, on top of the lab, on top, that you screw the tin to is, I believe it was an inch, maybe an inch, maybe a little more than an inch of foam. And the foam has full, it has a full backing on both sides. And the full is to reflect heat out. So when the sun heats the tin on the roof, it reflects it right back out. It won't allow it to try to penetrate through the insulation. And then the same thing, from the heat or the cool on the inside, it reflects the heat from the, like in the winter time or the cool in the winter time, uh, summertime, and it reflects it and bounces it back. This is the most efficient house that we've ever had. It's, it's easy to maintain, easy to take care of, and the walls have six inches of fiberglass insulation. And then on the inside, We have the same quality pine. This whole house is built out of all the same pine. This was one by eight pine, and we sent it to a local, another sawmill, a different mill than what we originally purchased the lumber from. He actually hauled it to another local mill that had the equipment to plane this down and tongue and groove it. So this is a, a tongue and groove pine walls. And I'll show you the sealer that we put on the outside. Pine tends to turn yellow. And especially at times in, in this part of the country, if you put polyurethane on your pine, it will even get more yellow. So we used a clear satin coat, the same that we use on our floors and on our countertops and we put a couple of coats on it and just left it natural. And it, it's, it's a little yellow, but it, it, it should. Well, I think dry. these lights too make it. The lights may make it look a little yeah, yellow. Yeah, it does. But, but this whole house, the, window, the windows are all trimmed out of the same pine. Now I bought this pine, if I remember correctly, somewhere around 50 or 60 cents a square foot, which would be a thousand foot of lumber would cost me $600. I believe it, that's about what I gave for it. And then whenever I sent it off, it seemed like it was probably a dollar a running foot whenever, I, you know, having it tongue and groove and plain down to use on the walls and our floor. And nowadays you can't buy it like that no more. It's probably gonna cost you, rough lumber in this area is right now is trying to sell for a dollar a foot, which would be a thousand dollars for a thousand feet. So our walls are actually seven foot instead of eight foot. I actually wanted the walls about six foot. I wouldn't have mind if they'd have been five foot, but it's not practical to be able to put anything against the wall. Plus, the more slope you get trying to look out a window, you're gonna be looking at the roof edge of your house. But if you are familiar with the old timing trapper houses, the old settler houses, were built really with low walls. And I love the way that looks, but it just really wasn't practical for us to do that. This fireplace mantle, an old fireplace mantle, was one of the first things that we purchased for this house. We actually purchased this before the house even got started. Uh, we run across it and we bought it. And uh, this, we've got a gas heater here. This is really for 
emergency use type thing. If for some reason we have to be away from the house for a few days uh, and we're not able to use our wood heat, our wood cook stove, then we would have something, if it was real cold weather, we'd have something to keep the house warm while we was gone. Yeah, and we just decided on that last winter. We just put that in last winter. Just We're getting older and what, if we have to go to the hospital, who knows? Or yeah, and I got family in Texas. If we had to run to Texas, you run know, to Texas, yeah, whatever. If we have to be away for more than a day or two, it will work fine. So to the tip of the roof. So our side walls are seven foot. So. The peak of the roof, the end walls are, I don't remember it exactly, but they're close from from the inside to the floors, close to uh, 13 feet. I think it's about 14 feet to the outside of the roof, but uh, it's about 13 feet high. And this right here is our dual purpose stove that we used last winter for the first time. We used to have just a regular heating stove and we was able to get a hold of this wood cook stove it is a pioneer made it actually loads from the top it don't have the door the newer ones nowadays have the doors down here to put wood in it has a big firebox we can leave for work at 5 30 in the morning get back home at 5 30 in the afternoon and still have coals and the house is warm and we cook on it a lot during the winter time but it's, it's a dual purpose item. So the floors are also one by eight, tongue and groove, same kind of pine. We took and uh, stained it with a walnut stain, and then we took the satin floor finish, a hardened floor finish, and sealed it. And this pine is so tough compared to normal fast growth pine. This is our countertop in the kitchen. It's a two by, actually probably a, a true two by. And these boards were nearly, I think they were 13, 14 inches wide. And it's out of the same pine. And this is what we built the countertop out of. And I took three different kind of stains and experimented and got it to look like it had weathered a little bit to make it give it a little bit of a weathered look kind of a gray look and while we're i'm going to show you what we used on this countertop this is not a polyurethane it is a floor finish hardened what's that say on there Water born floor finish. Cobalt thing or whatever that is, whatever it says there. I don't remember how to pronounce it. But anyway, this is what we used on our countertops. This is what we used on our flooring. And we also used it on the walls. And it's pretty high dollar stuff, but you don't want to use, this is a water base. They recommended, the Midianites told us they recommended a water base instead of an oil base. This is a water base and it has, it's really tough. It's really worked good for us. Now this old tin on the outside of the, uh, of the island that separates, you know, the sitting area from my galley kitchen. Um, I just like the old tin better than I like the new tin, the rustic look. Some people would rather probably have the, the new tin. But it's like this all the way around, except for the back. The back's open. But the Mennonites uh, built this. Of course, they built everything, so they've done a really good job. Today, The galley width from the sink to the stove is around four feet. Miss Lori's going to do a little uh, video on her. Uh, Pantry. Canned goods and pantry. Pantry over here when time comes. But from this wall right here, 
to the front door is all open. Our living room is behind the wood cook stove. Our dining room is on in the front of the cook stove. And it's all open. So the, the galley kitchen is for, I mean, as far as the area, is four it's, by 24. Or, yeah, and you've got stuff from one wall to the other, <laughs> cabinets. So it's 24 foot long, 24 foot long, the length of the house. And this smallest area here is four foot. The rest of it is larger than four foot. Yeah. But... I wanted a galley kitchen because I can work better in a galley kitchen than a kitchen that is U-shaped or round or whatever I can just get from workspace to workspace. The picture block over there, Mr. Brown bought for me, and uh, the woman I bought it from, I trust um, all of everything she sells. Uh, I trust her word on where it come from and, and how old it is. So it come... Uh, I'm pretty sure it came from Ohio. If I'm not mistaken, it was built in Ohio. And it may have come out of the Amish community. I'm not sure. But it's heavy, heavy, heavy. It's heavy. In fact, sometimes I worry about the legs on it. It's so heavy. It's, it's very heavy. But he bought it for me, and I really like it. So this here is our first dividing wall. It separates the kitchen, living room, dining room from our bedroom and up on top of this wall and we'll show you here in a second in the bedroom is a small loft and we store a few things up there uh, one thing that we talked about we might have done different was bring the loft maybe out over the kitchen a little bit for just a grandkid sleeping space and maybe a little more storage but we we didn't do that, but we had sometimes wish that we might. But I do like the open kitchen and all that also. So, so our bedroom don't even <laughs> don't even have a door, but you can walk into the bedroom. So this, we, our bedroom is, I don't even remember the dimensions, it's 14 by 14 or something like that. It's, it's a good size bedroom. It may be a 16 by 14. I haven't measured it in a while, but anyway, it's a good size bedroom. And this area up here is where the loft is. And <clears throat> right now we've got the ladder that goes up there on this side. It used to be we kept it on that side, but we had to put some cabinets and stuff in over there. So now the ladder to get up on top is actually over here. But uh, Now this house does, this cabin, like any cabin, does not have closets. But I want to show you that we, <laughs> after a while we decided that Mr. Brown had to have a closet. So we so do have the shift robe. We have a shift robe, an old shift robe that works very well. Yes, it does. And the old dresser goes with it but over here in the corner mr brown built him you can't see it because it's real dark let me see if i can get a better picture so later on we decided we need a little more closet space so i took this corner and built a, a, a closet for my stuff in here and used a piece of an old tin and this door open and shut and goes into the closet and i've got a light inside there and it works real good for me right now and we built it with leftover stuff, didn't we, pretty much? Yeah, that's what we had left over with, uh, with lumber and yeah. tin and this siding stuff that we... So stuff it we used didn't cost us much. Dividing wall. It works. So this is our second dividing wall back at the headboard of the bed. And this goes into the pantry, the laundry room. And look who's in here. <laughs> always at the laundry room so this is my little laundry room and there's not a whole lot of space in here but there's enough space and there's enough space for me and why I say that is 
I can come in here and do my laundry. I got a washing dryer in here. I have it, you know, fixed up to my personality. Now, when you have a small area and you don't have closets, sometimes you have to do stuff like this. And this is where my clothes are. And up here is just storage and needs to be straightened up, but that's where a lot of our paperwork and stuff is because we don't have a lot of, you know, space to, to put maybe like, filing cabinets or nothing like that we just and I wouldn't want them in here anyways now for another thing when you've got a small space we another thing when you got a small space you don't want to go wide with everything sometimes you want to go tall so I looked and looked and looked until I found this at a uh, well, it was a furniture st store, but what she does is she buys old furniture and, and restores it. And she had this, and I had been in and looked at it, and then I went back and, and bought it because it fits in here good, and this is where all my stuff is. Now, you're talking about this laundry room. I said pantry while ago. I don't know why, but this laundry room is actually probably about a 10 by 10. So it's not really all that small. No, but it's just, well, it's got a lot in it because it's my closet, it's my dress room, it's where we do laundry. I've also got part of a cabinet here, and this was not built in. It's just an old, uh, that come with the entertainment center. And I needed shelving here, so I just took it and put it in this corner, and it works. So this is just things that you do in a small area. Sometimes you got to go tall instead of wide, and it works. And you got to have baskets hanging in every room. And you do, and I love it. I think it looks good. So, yeah, and I want to show you all something else. You know, Mr. Brown and I, we're, like I said, we're ready for being off-grid, and that, too, includes washing clothes. If we're off-grid for some reason, we can't use a wash and dryer. But we are set to wash clothes. And Mr. Brown's going to show you our sink that we can also wash clothes in in our bathroom. And I'm just going to come through the door of the bathroom. It's right here off the washroom. Now, a lot of y'all have already seen this. And we got this from the same lady that we bought to the butcher block and a lot of our antique furniture from. And uh, it was a real good piece. And this thing will be here forever. Very heavy duty. <clears throat> the cabinet was built out of the pine and uh, thick pine. And we just made it where we sit in there and put a drain in the bottom of it. And it works. Grandkids, little grandkids have had baths in there. Now the bathroom is, um, what, about eight? It's an old, old mirror. The bathroom is probably about a... Well, actually, it's the same size as the, uh, just a little bit narrower as the washroom. Eight by ten, maybe. It's uh, with the shower and everything included, but the little, the little area in here is probably a six. Yeah, or six. this mirror was my son-in-law gave this to me. It was, um, I think it was his grandmother's, and uh, so I really like it, and I put it up there. But it just all goes together. But what I was saying about this sink. Y'all just don't have no idea how handy this sink is. Not only do we use it, you know, for our daily use, but we, I can wash clothes in this thing if I have to. I can wash grandkids. I have put a whole load of jars in here when I was canning and washing them up. Um, my green beans, when I had a ton of green beans that need to be washed, I come in here, sanitize my sink, and wash my green beans. There's, I just, We use this all the time, don't we? Yeah, it's it's over a foot deep. So it was a good idea. And um, we got the little window in the back. Which opens up. And our shower is just a, we don't have no bathtub, it's just a shower that has tin in it too. We use tin for the uh, water splash in the shower, on top oh, of the shower. Show you this door. When you live in a small place like this, you just, that's why we don't have no doors except for the outside doors. You don't want doors 
that had to open in because you're taking up way too much space when you got doors, you know. So the Mennonite built a pocket door where you can shut, shut it off like this. So I love this little pocket door. And he, the Mennonite also built this door. And inside here is shelving and our hot water heater. That's what this is. But they built this beautiful door. And this is not old. I bought this, I think, at Hobby Lobby. It looks old, though. It looks old. That's why I went ahead and got it. And I told him I wanted it on the store. So, so our hot water heater is in, in behind that door. And we have some shelving in there for for some more storage space also. And uh, don't look at my cobweb, y'all. And you can see how he done the hinges. It's just a really good job. Them hinges, I think, come in the same place, did they not? Yeah. And you can see in there on top of the shower, we have a center shower, like a rain, like it's raining on you. And we use that Galvalum 10 atop of the uh, shower base itself for a splashboard. And it's just a regular shower in there. Just a regular shower. Now you could put, you could do a tile you could. shower, yeah. It would work good in that corner. So the ceiling in the bathroom which is goes from it doesn't come all the way across almost to the angle of the roof coming down and goes out to the bedroom area and, and also covers the laundry room we have a ceiling and that has to that's because the little loft uh, that we store a few things at okay we're fixed to go out to the this is a screened in porch and this is what I made into my outdoor kitchen and it works wonderful. And as you go out of the outdoor kitchen, you go right into my main garden. It's not the only garden, but it's the main garden, but it's coming off of my bedroom because this is the only place we had to put a back door that wouldn't take up room from, you know, the wall space. So we're going to go out on the back porch. So a lot of y'all have seen me come out here and do a little bit of canning and, uh, well, mostly cooking out here. Um, but this is a, we use this area a lot. And also we have our, we have two deep freezes back here. We have an upright and a, a deep freeze. This is where I do a lot of my gardening stuff. You can see that I'm starting to start gathering seeds from stuff that's going to seed. And uh, we have some storage space out here. You can see how the whole thing is screened in. And I've got my outdoor dehydrator <laughs> out here too, just hanging. This is where I store it at. And this will be a whole nother video. This is a pretty neat thing. So we're going to go out and then I'm going to show you what the outside of the back porch looks like to give you an idea. Brown, I'll let you talk about, let them see how the back porch, the roof. So, <clears throat> this is the back porch, the screened in porch. And the sun is really bright right now. I don't know where you can see, we're going to be able to see very good. But there's the top of the porch, and you can see that the roof is a little bit lower than our main roof of the house. And we did that where we could drop that porch down where we could have a little step down coming out of the bedroom area. And back here in the back where Miss Lori, you can see everything she's got back here. She works an old sink back here. She works the garden, helps with the garden. 
And right out our back porch is, is our main garden and our shade tunnel that we experimented with. And right now we have some of the shade taken off the top because we have started some of our fall garden. Can't even see you in there. The butterfly bush has got you I covered. Know it. And my tomatoes are going nuts too. We but have tomatoes growing out the top of the 10 foot shade. Yeah. Anyways, we need to end this video. We hope that it, it helped a lot of y'all that were wanting to see and get measurements and understand our little cabin. Um, I think sometimes the video makes the cabin look big, but it's like Danny give you the the measurements. You give them the overall measurements, didn't you? 24 by 40. Right. Not counting the porches. Not counting the porches. So I think that's somewhere 960 square feet, I think. But it's plenty of room for us. We love it. We wish we'd have done it a long time ago, but God put you where he wants you at the right time, and that's where we're at now. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video, and we'll see y'all in a couple of days. And God